He's Michael Buble, singer-songwriter, record producer, a 10th anniversary deluxe edition of Michael Buble's classic album, Christmas, is available now. Great to have you back on the program, Michael. I'm curious what it's like when you go, you and your wife go to a Christmas party and somebody's got a piano there. What happens? <laughs> it's, it's just, it's, forget about the Christmas party. What about the shopping mall or the elevator? Oh, or the funeral home. <laughs> <laughs> when wait, when you hear your music, but yeah, that's a scary place. You don't want to hear it in the elevator, that's for sure. But uh, definitely, I mean, every I just went and bought stuff for my wife for Christmas. You know, of course, the last minute shopper just panicking. You know, what do I get? And of course, you know, people see me and say, like, can you sing that one? Can you do like Jingle Bells. <laughs> But my, with my personality, though, you know I'm in the middle of Bed Bath & Beyond going, jingle bells, jingle bells, <laughs> jingle all the way. Kevin Bacon <laughs> said that he hates going to a reception, a wedding reception, because everybody thinks he's going to dance like he did in Footloose. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, hey, come on, Kevin, dance like you did in Footloose there. Yeah. Um, if I could dance like Kevin, I probably would. I probably would be dancing. Yeah, but if he could sing like you, then he would be singing. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Where's the strangest place, though, you've been asked, like, you know, t to sing a song? Uh, you know, weirdly, I think it was my grandma's funeral. And I was really emotional. I was devastated. You know, I was just, I was just a big day for all of us. And this uh, sweet woman that we had hired in catering, this nice Italian lady, came up to me as I exited the bathroom, you know, and uh, she said, sing a song. Yeah, you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Sing home. And, I, and, you know, again, in my personality, I say, like, I don't know if this is the best time for that. <laughs> what, is the, what is the one song that somebody else sings that you wish was yours? Oh, God. That's a great question, man. There's so many. I think, I mean, I think God Only Knows uh, the is one of the, I mean, it's the one so of the most beautiful songs the, ever written. So the Beach Boys. I wish it was mine. I wish half the Ed Sheeran songs that he wrote were mine. Sometimes I fantasize about just, you know, going back in time and just stealing them, you know? <laughs> but do you, do you do covers? You have, I mean, you're a very humble guy. I, you know, a lot of artists don't want to do covers of somebody else, but mm -hmm. you have no problem with No, that? I do. You know what's weird? I, we, I live in a very weird, you know what? Dan? It's weird. I live in a very strange place as an artist because I, I am, I, I cover songs. I mean, I do what say Sinatra did or Presley, you know, I, I take these songs and I reinterpret them. The great American songbook, but my biggest successes have been songs that I've written. I've been the pop songs, which is very weird for people to try to put me in a box because what, what am I? Because those guys, Dean or, or Frank or Tony Bennett, they didn't write songs. They didn't have pop songs on the radio. So why do you, you know what I mean? It's yeah. very strange to have to explain, especially if people don't know. They don't understand the same guy who wrote Haven't Met You Yet or Everything or Home is the same guy who's doing Feeling Good or uh, Come Fly With Me. Who's tougher to uh, cover, though, if you look at those guys that you met? Like, is Sinatra tough to cover? It's never the artist. It's more about the song and the history of the song and who's had a part in the history of the song. You know, that's, it's funny. I find it, I don't find it easy to write songs. It, it's challenging to write a good song, obviously. If you, everybody could do it if they could. But when I write a song, it's original and no one can compare it to anything. When I cover Come Fly With Me, you're now dealing with a song that's been tackled by Ella Fitzgerald, Frank Sinatra, you know, <laughs> Connick. There's, there's all these, all of these, so it's, you know, it's weird. I think that's what I'm, be I'm best at. I think if anything, forget about singing or that, that part of reinterpreting it as a, as a vocalist. I think what I'm best at is conceptualizing and coming up with um, ideas to make a song fresh and sort of almost very cinematic ideas within the arrangement. Like say something like Cry Me River. I don't know if you ever heard my, my version of Cry Me River. But <clears throat> Cry Me River is a great song. But it took, I was, you know, I think I was in a, having a bath or something. And I had come up with this line. And this big dramatic build. 
And when I took it to the producer and I sang it to him, he right away, he understood the concept. And, and like I said, it was very cinematic. It was almost like a James Bond-esque build and you could feel the drum. And I knew for my show, it'd be a great way to open the show. And so that is the challenge is taking something that's been done so many times and making it sound brand new. And you know, you've done it when you take a song and it's a standard that's been there for 60 years or 80 years. And people say, I love, you know, I love that you wrote this song or whatever they, they you know, they'll tell me, they'll say like, I love, try to think like feeling good, you know, they'll say like, wow, I love the way, you know, you wrote feeling good. It's amazing. And of course I'll say, thank you. But do as opposed you, to, I didn't write that. that <laughs> <laughs> do you have to ask for per- permission to cover a so- uh, song with an artist? No, you don't, you don't have to ask. And what's weirder is like, so it's happened to me. So years ago, I wrote a song called home. And it was good for me. It went number one on, on this format of radio on AC or whatever. And then Blake Shelton, the country singer, he covered it. And he had a number one that was bigger than my number one. And, and he had a, his number one was in country radio. Across the pond, a band called Westlife had a number one with it. They called the record home. And so people kept coming up to me and saying, I love that cover of West, Westlife's <laughs> home. Or I love that Blake. <laughs> And the same thing was happening. I was like, no, I wrote that. That's mine. But what do you get paid off of that? A ton. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good for you. A ton. Good. So what thank are those... you, Blake Shelton. <laughs> Keep listening to Blake Shelton's home, everyone. <laughs> what are those checks like, though, when they come in? That is there a reference to where the money's coming from? Yes, there definitely is. It's all broken out. It's weird now because of the way that streaming is. I mean, isn't your, is your world changed with streaming? How much is your world changed with uh, pod, how things are remunerated? Podcast, uh, digital, like we had 11.9 million downloads last month. Wow. That's a lot. That's it, a lot. Yeah. yeah. And do you know, and do you know what your, your cut of that, this is a terrible conversation to have, but do you know what the cut is? Like, I have no idea. I think, I know my manager deal, uh, he's a great guy. His name is Bruce Allen. I know he's very, and he's generous. I get, I get 20%. He gets 80%. Uh, <laughs> I think that's a good deal. I've been told, if, he told me it's a very good deal. <laughs> wow. Do you know what your cut is, Dan? Do you know what you like? Do you know what you get out of it, that? It, it, it's so, the pie is cut up in so many slices that, yeah. that you, you know where things go and what they go for. I understand. And and I bought my own man cave and then I have to rent out the equipment. So, you know, I'm 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 still paying people for things that they're not involved with the show anymore. If that makes sense. Okay. Well I hope and I I, I know McLovin's leaving. I hope you get to still pay him um even when he's gone. Can you I know this is you know I'm I'm asking you to do something for me. You know, you're in the elevator. You're at a funeral. Do you got something to sing to McLovin that, like, you know, this is the we got twenty more minutes. You got yeah. you got something we can just kind of give him because we didn't get him anything good today. I mean, we're not that sorry he's going, but we like yeah. we'd like to convey that if we could. Like, Absolutely, you got something, something lightly emotional that you could sing to McLovin. Okay, let me just try, uh, like... Uh, okay, hold on, let me... Get... Mate, what about this, Nick Levin? Okay. Wait, hold is on, it... Michael. I, it... I, I yeah. gotta give the official introduction here. <clears throat> the 10th Anniversary Deluxe Edition, and Michael's not telling me to say this, I'm doing this, his uh, classic <laughs> album, Christmas, available now, a new studio album coming out next spring by invitation. He also has uh, a fragrance for women on set. What? I don't know anymore. <laughs> I, it's not even me. It's the, the manager. <laughs> it smells like the manager. Do you get 20% of that as well? Wait, yes, of course I do. <laughs> okay, here we go. Michael Buble <clears throat> sings to McLovin. McLovin, thanks for the memory. You weren't good, but you were okay. We thought you were fine. Maybe you were adequate. I think it is time to say thanks for the memory. Thank you. I was trying to think of what rhymes with adequate. <laughs> I, by the way, I didn't prep Michael to do that. He, 
but but he does know your limitations, McLovin. Was that like Bette Midler singing to Johnny Carson? Was that the same thing? Kind that of that kind of was that, except that I don't <laughs> think Bette was as hungover as I am right now. <laughs> Have you ever played a show drunk? Never. That's weird. People think often. There's a big thing. <laughs> when I started, because I was I was so I was so loose, you know. I was. It's here's the thing. I did this. I started when I was 16. And my grandpa used to sneak me into nightclubs and he was a plumber. And so the only way that we knew how to get me out there was he would trade. So he'd get musicians or a club guy and he'd say to the club guy, let my grandson in to sing. And they'd say, no, my, your grand, your kid, he's six, 16 years old. They're drinking age is 19. He'd say, listen, I'll go and I'll fix the toilet and I'll put in a hot water heater in the kitchen here. And he would go in and, and trade Contra and they'd let me up on stage. So I did this from I was like it's been a long you know even weirder I, I i think this is true but i was 16 in vancouver playing on like u street on these little clubs and bars and restaurants and stuff and across the street was a kid even younger than me that was doing stand-up at like 14 and 15 and that was seth rogan and i used to hear about him i used to hear about like oh you know there's this kid there's this young kid like you and he's doing this you know he's, he's in the clubs the adult clubs and stuff anyway so by the time i got to doing this at 26 and finally got signed it'd been 10 years of me working so i was very loose up there very you know confident and, and it was very easy for, fun for me but people say well he's wasted that guy's wasted but, but dean, I'm such dean a, martin always gave you the impression that he was wasted but, yeah. he, but he wasn't but it, i think that's the impression i gave but the truth is i'm such a control freak that i would never ever do anything that could i would ever lose uh, that kind of control i i like, I think that um, it's funny. I just did this Christmas special and Lauren Michaels was the producer. We were talking about a lot of the artists because I did a thing with Jimmy Fallon. And we were talking about, and you know a lot of those guys. And we were actually talking about how loose they all seem and how great uh, they are at improvisation. But there's, most of them, 95% of them, are so structured. And they're so, um, you know what I mean? Yeah. They, you're that it all seems like it's just off the cuff easy, but that's because that's, that's the, I was going to swear that they have prepared so well, like Jimmy Fallon, it's funny, you know, sweet and funny and, you know, real silly and goofy and stuff when you, but man, backstage when we were working out this, this gag that we were doing, it wasn't, it was real serious, real structured. And, uh, so no, never been drunk, never been high. Um, but that, but when we switch over to to, to my normal life, <laughs> I've never been sober. <laughs> you know? It's off stage where the problems well done. are. Well done. Yeah. Uh, you. Your football, your fantasy football team in shambles. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Tom Brady and uh, Alma Kamara were my. I look at I. I actually, this isn't a joke. I just put my head down in shame. <laughs> um. You, yeah, you felt I, uh, pretty good I had, last I had Tom year. Brady and I had Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, and I put in Tom. And I really liked Brady, and obviously he's a great player. And that just four points, and uh, Kamara just was invisible. Are you a Seahawks fan? I am a Seahawks fan. Oh, yeah. sorry about that, too. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that, Michael. It's really getting it's just getting much worse. More, you know? more drinking. Uh, before I let you go, um, yeah. I play judge here, and I want you to be honest. Okay. okay, this is American Idol. I want you to, can this person sing? Okay. Okay. Okay, here we go. In the meadow, we can build a snowman. We'll pretend that he is Parson Brown. He'll say, I am married. We'll say, no man. But you can do the job when you're in town. Yeah. Would yeah, you, actually, yeah. Would you send him on to Hollywood if you're Simon Cow? I would go. You know what the first thing I would do? I'd say, hey, Randy Newman, hey, we're going to do a new Disney track. You don't even have to sing it. We have a guy who can sound like you. Really? I think so. He's kind of got that thing. Who was that? That's Fritzy. That's really good. That was really nice. He's Thank got you. that kind of, that Randy Newman-esque, that cool, that kind of character to his voice. Do you know Randy Newman, Todd? Now I do. Wait, we're, come on. He, he's done all these great soundtracks. Is he the one that sang like short people and stuff like that? Yeah. You've got a friend in Yeah. <laughs> you got a friend in me. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> Hey, do you want to hear Fritzy do Rick Astley? 
Here we go. We're no strangers to love. You know the rules, and so do I. Never gonna give, never gonna give, never gonna give. You Jump in, Michael. Come never on. gonna let never you gonna down. down. Never, never gonna, gonna run, run around and hurt <laughs> you. Never gonna say goodbye. <laughs> never gonna say goodbye. <laughs> wow. Never gonna tell a lie and desert you. What do you think? That's good, man. Oh. I would love to get in the shower. I would love to get in the shower with you. <laughs> <laughs> we would sound so good together. That can be arranged, Michael. That is a fabulous that idea. That can be arranged. It'll have to be a big shower, though, to get Todd in there okay. with you. All right. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, great to talk to you again. And uh, Likewise, man. So nice it, to, and, I, and I'm so excited to be here on this day, like the last day of Christmas. It's like school, you know? Yeah. Remember the last day of school when yeah. you were going off for Christmas break and it was so exciting? Yeah. Now my football's dead. I got my Vancouver <laughs> Giants hockey team that I'll be watching. Thank so you. So that's how I'm spending the break. Thank you, Michael. Great to talk to you. Merry Christmas Likewise. to you and your family. Thank you, buddy. God bless, guys. Take care. That's Thanks. Michael Buble, singer, songwriter, record producer. What a cool guy. Dude is awesome. He plays. He wants to entertain. And, and it makes my job so much easier when you have somebody who's willing to play like that.